thank you Abba Father in Jesus glorious and matchless name we have prayer walk to two three four five people and say to that person I can't remain like this you are not saying it as if you mean it walk to ten, ten, ten people and I say say to him or her I can't remain like this Tell the person whether you like it or not, I can't remain like this. My testimony will show forth. Praise the Lord. You can be seated in the heavenly places far above principalities and powers if you can. Praise the Lord. By the special grace of God, I will be sharing briefly with us what the Holy Spirit has downloaded in my spirit the early hour of this morning. And... Uh, that word is my downfall is not my end. My downfall is not my end. My downfall is not my end. Praise the Lord. I want us quickly to go to the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16. Let's be on the first land. My downfall is not my end. My downfall is not my end. They may have written you off. Men and women in the world may have concluded issues about your life. But that is not the conclusion of your destiny. Because when God took a decision to make you whom you are, he never consulted anybody. But he took the decision by himself and decided to bring you through the family which you come and from. And they have a glorious future for you. And because of that glorious future that God has for you, a lot of things are fighting to make sure that those things do not work out. But that devil is a liar. The, the Bible says that when they come in one way, in seven ways they will scatter. When they come like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise a standard against them. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivered them from them all. What comes to you comes to you as a result of what your destiny carries. The level of challenge you face in life determines the height of the destiny that you carry. The devil does not fight a coward. Devil fight only men and women that have a great destiny to accomplish on earth. If you don't have a great destiny, the devil cannot look for you. The devil cannot put a trial on your path. The devil can never come across you. You will be like handkerchief in his hand. Why he have not handled you like an handkerchief is because it is, it, it is not easy for him to handle you. Because what is inside of you is too powerful and too heavy for the devil to handle. And that's why he keeps putting store one way or the other for you to stumble. But no matter how many they try, God will give you victory in all. Can I have an amen in the house? Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16. Proverbs 24 verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times. Look at what the Bible says there. It said the just man. He falleth how many times? Talk to me everybody. The just man falleth how many times? Seven times the just man. He didn't even talk of an unbeliever. But a man who knows God, a man who is connected to God, a man who believes in the existence of the supremacy of the Almighty. He says he has an opportunity to do what? To fall even seven times. Even seven times. The problem is not in the falling. The problem is in the rising. It is not that a man falls is the problem but the remaining where you have fallen that is where the problem is and man of god what did the scripture says there and rise it up again uh-huh but the wicked shall fall into mischief look at what he said thank you he say he will fall seven times and has an opportunity to rise even the seven times and that's why I don't believe in that word that says opportunity comes but once. I don't believe in it. I don't confess it. I don't mention it. I don't say it. Because as long as you live, 
several opportunity comes your path. The one you miss yesterday, if another one come, you will not miss it. Are you getting what I'm saying? He said the righteous are four or seven times and have an opportunity to do what? To rise second time. Even seven times. And that's why the man that is so great, greatly anointed, called the Samson in the Bible. The Bible says that this man was so much anointed that all the forces of darkness, the hell get loose because of this man. They were not getting loose because of any other thing. It's because of the level of the power and the anointing that they carry. And the hell said, no, if we leave this young man with this power, he will become a terrorist to their kingdom. So they began to do what? Put every mechanism to make sure they stop him. Separately, they do several meetings at your back. Even when you are sleeping. To do what? To bring you down. They stay in their conspiracy. They conspire in one way or the other. Targeting what? They are targeting the star of your destiny. And that's why they try it in the case of Jesus. The Bible said when Jesus was born in the Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, according to Matthew chapter 2 verse 8, and from verse 1 rather, and, and the Bible says in that particular place, immediately he was born, Herod and all Jerusalem, their heart was troubled. Why is it that an infant was born and suddenly the heart of men were troubled? It's because of what that child is having. As a result of that, the man took an oath to destroy all the child, children between the age of two down to the zero age. Because he was searching for one man, one child to kill. He don't know many people that have died. As a result of them looking for you to destroy but God keep on sending his angel to do what? To stand by your side to defend your case day and night. And the Bible said they tried everything, but they could not get Jesus. Instead, an information was given to Joseph to do what? To carry the young child and run to Africa in Egypt to hide him for some time. In order to prepare him to fulfill the destiny nothing will cut you all from fulfilling your destiny. Can I have an amen in the house? So what the devil is after is not your beauty. What the enemy is after is not your handsomeness. What the enemy is after is not because you are skillful. It's because of the level of what your destiny is carrying. And they are doing everything possible to make sure you go down. They are doing everything possible to make sure that things are not working for you. But that devil is a liar. Jesus will step out for you. He will fight your battle in the morning, in the noon, in the night. And he will give you victory. If you believe that, can I have an amen? My downfall is not my end. It is not the summary. You may be down now, but that is not your end. You may be down supernaturally, spiritually, financially, materially, otherwise. But say to yourself, this is not my end. I am on the transit point. This is not my destination. I have a target of the place I am going. The Bible said that a prophet cannot die. In a strange land, unless he reach Jerusalem. A prophet is not permitted to die in a strange land. A covenant child of God is not permitted to die in a strange land. Unless you get to Jerusalem. A land that is flowing with milk and honey. A place of the fulfillment of your destiny. That is the place that God has called you to get to. And no devil will stop you from getting there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Said the righteous will fall seven times and we rise again. 
So it doesn't matter the mockery of men. Because in the time that a man is down, a woman is down, a lot of issues, a lot of talks, a lot of side talks, a lot of things that people, people will come to mock you. People will say, where is that your God? Every time you pray, every time you say you believe in the God of your salvation, what can that your God do? What can that your God do? Can you call on your God? And they mock you with all manner of mockery. But listen to me, don't give up. Because the God we serve is the God that sleepless not. The Bible says, I will look up unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He neither sleep nor slumber. He watcheth over his people. He has not forgotten you in this week of resurrection. Heaven will remember you. It will remember your family. It will remember that business. It will bring a transformation to your life. If you believe that, rise up on your feet and shout, yes! Your downfall is not your end. You cannot end like this. You cannot end in the place where you are. Between now and the next three years, the people that knew you now, that know you now, will not recognize you again. Because the position that God is going to place you is unimaginable position. God will lift you above your contemporaries. He will lift you above the place where your friend they think you cannot get to. The hand of the Lord will move you there. If you believe that the hand of the Lord will do it for you, can I hear your amen like a thunder? It is only God that can do it. It is only God. He has the capacity. He has the capability. And that's why the Bible said the other day in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 it said unto him that is able. Come and say my God is able. I am not hearing you say my God is able. Say my God is able to do all things. Say my God is able to lift me up. Say my God is able to expand me. I say my God is able to increase me. If you believe that, seal it up with an amen. Unto him that is able. Unto him that is able. Exceedingly. Abundantly. Above all. We ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. He is able to do all things. If God is no more in the business of answering prayer, I will resign to be a pastor. Are you understanding me? It's the answer. And that's why I'm still in his business. And that's why I'm still preaching his word. Because what you, who sees you yesterday and think he will remain like that today and think the same level you will be tomorrow, that person is a liar. Because the hour of lifting, heaven will not consult anybody. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that hour has come. He said to me, my end, I mean, my downfall, it is not your end. It's not your end. Because there are a lot of battles in life. I was talking to my son the other day. And my first son. And I said to him that the war is warfare and not funfair. You have to stand well. Now that you are coming up, that the Spirit of God told me, there are a lot of things I should be telling you now. Many of them you will not understand it. But I keep, keep on saying it. It will enter into his spirit, man. Register there. The day that that word will save him, it will appear. He will hear the voice. I say it is not fun fair, it is warfare. There are things you must stand up now begin to hear. You know why? I say I left my father's house. I left my mom and my dad when I was 15. I say now you are close to 16 years. So there are things I must tell you now. That you need to know whether you understand it now or not. But it will be a guide to your life and to your destiny. So that some certain places that I make mistakes. Because I have nobody to put me through. 
towards that place, you will not make the same mistake. Are you getting what I'm saying? I say, I am fighting for you. I'm fighting for your siblings so that none of you will pass through what I pass through. Are you getting what I'm saying? So somebody has to pay the price. If you see any man enjoying anything in life, either his great grandfather fought to the battle, or his grandfather, or his father, somebody must fight. Are you getting what I'm saying? The battle that your father refused to fight, he will live to face you. And if you fail to fight it, it will live to face the next generation, which is your children. So you fight it and stand in the gap to do what? what you don't want that is happening in your family. Ask the Lord to use you to correct the error. So that you can lay a proper foundation to the unborn generation. I don't only pray for my children. I always pray also for my generation. For my generation. Generation unborn. Because we will live and fulfill our age on earth and die. And our generation will continue. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you have to stand in the gap. It is not from faith. It is warfare. Micah chapter 7 verse 8. Micah chapter 7 verse 8. Let's be on the first line. It is certain that a man must fall. But not certain that he or she will remain where he has fallen. Micah Micah chapter 7 7, verse 8. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. Look at what a man called Micah, the prophet Micah, was talking. He was announcing to his enemies and said, Rejoice not, O my enemies. Because any time that your back is on the ground, there are people that will rejoice. And they say that he has big mouth. He pray a lot. But look at what is befalling him. All these things are supposed not to come to him. Why is it coming to him? They begin to talk things that they do not understand how it is happening. They begin to interpret the issues of your life. They don't know how your life starts. They don't know anything about your destiny. But they pump in. Why? Because they say that the man is down. And Micah said, Rejoice not over my enemy. What happened? When I fall, I shall rise. Look at the confidence the young man had. Even when I fall, even the situation of the earth make me to fall. Even when the condition of the nation, the economic crunch of the nation make me to fall. I shall do all. I shall rise. It is a personal decision. That's why my hashtag says, huh? don't stop digging the well. Until you find water. It doesn't matter how hard it is. If the water didn't come out in our water, it will come out in our land. Now you get what I'm saying? You keep on digging the water. On the process of digging, there are a lot of things or circles that comes across. Don't give up because those things are there to do what? To discourage you for you to give up. You may be close to what you are looking for. Suddenly, get tired. You miss it. I prophesy to somebody. You will not miss your target. I don't like that amen. I say you will not miss your target. I believe you have a target. I believe that there is something that you are looking for. I believe that you have a place that you focus that between now and first week of December, you have arrived where you're supposed to arrive. Heaven by his power will take you there. If your amen is louder, your own will come first. He said, rejoice not all oh, my enemy. When I do all, when I fall, I will do all. I will rise again. Because he has the understanding about what the Bible says. In Proverbs chapter 24 verse 16. And say the righteous shall do what? Four, seven times. And will rise again. He was not intimidated by it. And say all these things is just for a while. 
And the other day Jesus was speaking, he said, uh, these things that you are passing through are little affliction. He said it's just for a moment. And never to be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed. There is a glory that is about to be revealed. There is a new city that God is about to take you into. There is a new platform that God wants to place you upon. There is a new place that God wants to take you. A place of glory. A place that is flowing with milk and honey. One of my daughter called me one day and I came to their house. And I entered into that particular place. And I saw her crying. And I said, why are you crying? He said, daddy, I never believed that I will be the one in this kind of apartment, big apartment. And that was the tears of joy. Because of where she's coming from. She never dreamed that God is going to give her a man who will love her. Who God will bless and place her in the place of joy and happiness. Because right from the time he was coming up, he left the, the, the mother's, uh, 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 their father's house. When she was very, very tender. Becoming a maid from one house to the other. But one day, heaven have to remember her. And they place her in the place of joy and happiness. And the tears was rolling out of her eye. Only tears that are permitted to come out of your eyes in this season is the tears of joy. It shall be so to you in the name of Jesus. He said, Rejoice not, oh my enemy. Rejoice not. Don't conclude when heaven has not concluded. That full stop your enemy put on their right door. It just come out. Because God has not concluded. He said, Rejoice not. Don't conclude here. Because God is still working on me. When heaven is still working on you, let people say whatever thing they want to say. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let them talk whatever thing they want to talk. A man met me the other day. He said, man of God, when I have not even entered ministry, I know the dimension, the way you minister. Over 12, 13, 15 years ago, you have not seen me for some time. And they say, unless you have dropped. I said, I can't drop. It is not possible to drop if you are shouting on the message you had 12 years ago. Huh? I said the one of now is hotter and more inspirational than the one of yesterday. I said I can't go down. It is not possible. And he was saying to me something he said, in this level you are now, it's not the level you're supposed to be. I said I am on transit point. I know what you are saying. There is a place that I am going. And I will not give up until I get there. You will get there. I don't like your image. Say you will get there. So don't be intimidated by what they are saying. When you see a man go to his bed. And you know, sit down on his bed. And you use his back and the rest on the wall. There is trouble. Use this place. Put it on the wall. There is a heavy. I don't even do it. Because that is the type of posture or position. You put yourself, you begin to remember how you have failed in life. Put you into a place of you look at yourself, you say, poor me. You begin to say all manner of things against yourself. Instead of you to promote yourself and look at yourself in the mirror and say, I can't serve a great God and remain small. Look at yourself and say, I can't remain like this. The condition that Job found himself was a very worse than the terrible condition. A man came and mocked him. The condition that many of his friends visited him, they could not talk for days. The condition that made the wife to say to the husband, I want to be a widow. Die! Because this is your God and go. Have you ever seen a woman decide to be an emergency widow? She took it upon herself and said, I want to be a widow. Because this is your God and die. Because of the condition of the man. And Job looked at him at her. Woman, why are you talking like one of these foolish women out there? You 
receive something good from God and equally you are not want to receive that. I know that my Redeemer liveth. Though he slay me, I will keep trusting him. After I might have been tried in a fire, I will come forth like a shining gold. That was the confession of the man. Even in that condition, though he slay me, I will keep trusting him. And that is the man that God boasted with when the devil were parading everywhere. I said, devil, where are you coming from? The Bible said when the sons of men come to worship God, the devil also came. Do you know that devil come to church? I confirmed that from the word of God. And God saw him when other people are in the church. He said, where are you coming from? He said, you know my mission from here and there. Searching for destinies to destroy. They will not see your destiny to destroy. That is his own mission. He said, okay. Have you tried my servant Job? <laughs> Trouble started. I preach a message in the conspiracy of heaven and hell. Job didn't do anything. But God attracted trouble to him. And was ready to stand by him. And to defend him. And at last restore him. He said, have you tried my servant? And the devil quickly said, who will you bless with all this level of money? Well, and the riches and he will not serve you. <laughs> he said, no bad. He said, okay. I give you permission to go and do what? Do what? I know your work. The thief comment number to do what? Talk to me. To steal. And number two. To kill. Number three. That is his mission. But Jesus has come that they might have life. And have it more abundantly. So eh? Internal life. Life without an end. That is the mission of Jesus. But look at the one of the devil. Quickly he began to do what? Cause his business to collapse. Because we know that when man, there is no money in your hand. A man that is bold will begin to talk like a coward. Are you getting what I'm saying? They demobilize him. And when everything is gone, the children gone. And they inflicted him with sickness all over his body. Then look at what God do at the end of the day. Because your downfall, it is it's not your end. Look at what he did on the end of the day. The Bible says at the end of the life of Job, when he himself decided not to do what? To deny God. He restored back fourfold of everything he has lost. He become more richer. He become more prosperous. Than ever. God stood by his side. In the time of temptation. He was there. Only what we need to do is to hook on him. As Job hooked on God. And he said I will not keep up. Until. I read the place in Job chapter 14 verse 14. He said if a man die. Shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time. Shall I wait. Until my change comes. Until my change come. He trusted in God so much. How much will you trust him in this season? Because God is about to bless us. The blessing will hit your family. Your amen is hanging on top of the roof. I say your blessing will hit your family. The blessings of your family will never be diverted. If amen is louder, it will appear in your home first. Man of God, finish that place. So rejoice not on my enemy when I have fallen and I will rise again. And what happened? When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. God bless you. I am not afraid. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death. Yeah, no either. Why? Because the Lord is with me. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel 
of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sinners or sit with the scornful. His delight is always in the law of God. Upon it doth he meditate day and night. It will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in the time of his season. That whatsoever he lay his hand, he shall prosper. That was the understanding that kept him going. Even when I sit in the darkness, I have assurance that the God that I serve will bring light there. Light reveals. Light exposes. Light exposes you. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says in the beginning when the earth was without form and void. And the spirit of God was hovering upon the waters. And what happened? And God said let there be light. And there was light. The confidence you need to have is that no matter how thick the darkness is. That light will look at me. No matter how the business looks as if it's not working. The light will shine on my path. The Bible says that the path of the just is like a shining light. That do all, that shine brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. There is a day called perfect day. A day of rejoicing. A day of celebration. A day that you will look up and look down. A day that you will look back and say, Am I the one who have done all this day? I am from nowhere. But God brought me somewhere. I am nobody. But God has made me somebody. My name is not known by anybody. But God has announced my name all over the world. Who am I that God has done this day? And the tears of joy will rule. God is taking you to that day. And say a day of word, a day of joy. I want to round up this message. My downfall is not my end. Any down you move like this, just talk to yourself. This is not my end. This is not the way I will end. I've made up my mind to stand in a gap. For God have taken a decision to bless me. And no man can keep me down. They look at it. He say, even in the darkness. The Lord will command his light. So great light. Every one of us need a great light in our family. When light enters. Darkness have no option to do what? To give way. The light of God will shine. You will be a light to your generation. You will be a light to your father's house. You will be a light to your community. You will be a light wherever you find yourself. That devil is a liar. He will not stop you on the way. You will be a great light. That is what God is up to. That is what he has decided to do. And the Bible made me to understand on that particular place where in John chapter 5, reading from verse 1, the, the important folks were waiting for the moving of the water. The Bible called them important folks. This is where circumstances of life have stopped them. These are men and women that have a great destiny. On the track of their destiny, they were struck. They were heated. The Bible says some of them were paralyzed. Of whatsoever disease he or she may have. And a certain season can be once in six months. A certain season can be worked once in one year. But one day, when heaven took a decision to do what? To lift up a man. Protocols were broken. Protocols were broken. The protocol that was broken is that suddenly Jesus appeared. Listen to me. At the end of this service, he will appear in your family. If your amen is louder, he will come to you. He appeared. The time has not come, but suddenly he showed up. He showed up. Because he said, I am the resurrection and life. For everything that is dead, I have the capability and the capacity to do what to bring back to life. He appeared. And I said to the man, Will thou be made whole? A very simple question. The man began, began to talk stories. You know, a lot of us know how to talk stories. <laughs> we began to talk stories and complain. 
We can complain very well. He said, without being made whole, he said, I have no man. Is that the answer to the question? Without being made whole? And the man said, I have no man. When the water is being troubled, I have nobody to throw me inside the water. When I try everything I could, I could not enter. And another person stepped before me. He said, that is a lot of stories. I have no man. Do you know that that man was making every effort to do what? To be delivered of the problem. As you are making every effort to move out from that level you find yourself now. The man was making, but 38 years. I don't know how old the man is. I don't know the, how old the man was. But the, his problem was 38 years. He was on a spot. Waiting for the moving of the water. Waiting for the transformation of his life. But that day, Jesus, the Bible says, and Jesus knew that he had been in that case for too long. What you are passing through, what I am passing through, what every one of us is passing through, he is away. He knew he was there and he said, let me now intervene on a situation. Heaven will intervene for you. And he stepped out to heal him. And he said, man, take up your bed and do what? And go. And the Bible says immediately the man was made whole. The problem that I've kept him for 38 years was solved just in a jiffy. Because of what Jesus was involved in the matter. Because of what? That is not the end of his life. He stands for. It's not the end. It's not the end. But one day God did it. And he was rejoicing and living. And that was the end of the sorrow of that man. Somebody's sorrow, somebody's challenges will end today. If that amen is louder, may God walk on your family. And that was the end. The life of the young man was transformed. He became who God wanted him to become. Everything that is trying to cripple your movement. Your acceleration, your increase today, heaven will cut them off. All those excesses, heaven will disconnect it from you. I give you every victory that you need. There is a grace operating here. Go out there, tell others, get connected to what is going on here. Because there is a grace. This is not the end. This is not the way it will continue. There is expansion. There is an increase. There is overflow. There is coming. And that's why he says, the little affliction is just for a moment. And never to be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed. Stand up on your feet as I pray for you. Say to yourself again, I say, I can't remain like this. You are not saying it with assurance. Say it so that your neighbor can hear you. Shout it so that even the devil can hear it. It is not possible. Your confession will determine in a great deal what will happen around you. There are things I don't like people say. Some people say at all, at all, and I am bad. And that is where they are. They like small, small things too much. I've seen so have some people like that. Once you give them like that, they'll just lie. <laughs> but look at them. They just laugh. They're excited. But to you, they have a great vision. They just look at that one as a scratch. And a focus on where you are going. That the bigger things is about to come. It doesn't matter where you are now. It doesn't matter what your bank account is saying. Just in one second. A poor man can become a millionaire. That bank account that is red will suddenly become green. 
If you want your own to be green, can I have an amen?